So, as far as this Japanese pair are concerned, at the start of today, they were number 12 in the world ranking. But Steen Pinson has just noticed that the world rankings have been republished. And they've gone down one place, gone down one place to number 13 from their career high of 12. Making their first appearance here at the China Open, a Japanese pair. Fukuman, 23 years of age. Yo now won't turn 23 until next month. There they are, 13 in the world ranking. And 19 and 16 reached the final of the Malaysian Grand Prix Gold, where they lost to their opponents of today in the final. They beat Juala Gutta and Ashwini Ponopa in the very first round, 21-16, 21-11 in 34 minutes. So to the Danish combination and the tall left-hander, Camilla Rutil, will turn 32 later this month. There is Christina Peterson, 29. She's been in a couple of finals here in the mixed doubles with Joachim Fischer. 2011 and 2013, but with her women's doubles partner, there she is, Camilla Rutil. They have been in three consecutive quarterfinals here at the China Open, trying to make it four in a row. They've been in four finals this year from 13 tournaments. Won the Malaysian Grand Prix Gold, obviously, and the German Grand Prix Gold, and then were beaten in the final of the World Championships and the Japan Super Series. So this is the fourth meeting between the two pairs. Not only have the Danes won all three previous encounters, they've won them all in two straight games. And all of those three previous encounters have all been this year. Last time they met was in the last 16 of the Korea Super Series. And as you saw, 21-11, 21-15, it was fairly comfortable. Well, as far as this Japanese pair is concerned, bronze medalists at the World Championships in Jakarta. And won a higher bronze medal before they'd even reached the final of... or before they had won a Grand Prix gold event and before they'd gone beyond a last 16 of a Super Series. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Never beyond a Super Series second round and yet at the... World Championships, they won a bronze medal. Probably the biggest surprise of the World Championships, do you think, their bronze yeah. medal? Yeah, I think so. Um, not not the Japanese pair you would have expected to, to win a medal. Um, Kukiva and Maeda and, and of course Matsutomo and um, Takahashi were better bets. And both seeded. Yeah. On my right, Naoko Fukumang and Kuromi Nao, Japan. On my left, Christina Patterson and Kamala Raja Jo, Denmark. Naoko Fukumang to serve to Kamala Raja Jo, level play. So the bronze medalist from the World Championships get the, his second round match underway against the silver medalist. One, no. Now, Steve, I don't know if you got to watch any of the previous encounters between these two pairs, but certainly from my memory, I think that the Danes just had too much attacking play and coming from such an angle that despite the defensive qualities of the Japanese pair, they simply couldn't deal with the attack. No. Was that a fair assumption, uh, uh, summation of yeah, I think so. what happened before? I think so. Um, I'm not sure Love. if we've commentated on one of these matches, but uh, I think I remember from the one from the Worlds that um, it was a fairly easy win for the Danes. Mm. Yeah. 
12 and 15. Yeah. Of course, also, I mean, for both these two pairs, it was extraordinary to be able to, to reach the final. The Danes the reached the over. final, but One, anyway, two. a little less of a surprise than had um, uh, Fukuman and Yonao reached the final. That would have been an absolute sensation. Yeah. Of course, the Danes in reaching that World Championship final became Double the first double. ever Danish women's doubles pair Three, to be one. in the World Championship final. Yeah. But it still remains the only discipline that Denmark hasn't won a gold medal at the World Championships. But they were mighty close. Over. Four, two. Yeah, and, and also we talked about the firepower of the Danes, but but also the lack of firepower of the, of the Japanese pair. Mm. Um, the Danes are struggling against pairs who can actually who has Double a over. good defense, but also Three, can score some four. points uh, on the counter attacks. Yeah. Goodness me, what sort of return of serve was that? Yeah. Low serve, she lets it drop, ball, lifts it, and lifts I it long. I think it was a very, very well-placed uh, service from Christina Pedersen. She, she couldn't really decide whether to return it with the backhand or forehand shot. Okay. This is an example of the lack of firepower in my opinion on the Japanese side this was a dangerous situation for Pedersen and Yule but um, we're not able to capitalize on it Look at that return of serve. That is Nobody just delightful. Seven, five. And Ruta Yule. She's a former world champion in the mixed doubles discipline 2009 with Thomas Labon. funny in many ways how different players different pairs have um, other players pairs that they don't really like to meet um, we saw it with Christina Pedersen Camilla Ritter Yule who had enormous difficulties uh, against uh, Christina Meswari uh, Meswari and Gracia um, Poli thank you yeah. Um, no, we've seen it with uh, Yong Jo Bei in women's singles against Wang Shishan, who mm. was down like 12 nothing or something before yeah. she finally got a victory. Um.
yes. Yeah, well played. That is so good. The combination play, the way they set it up for each other. Yeah, and, and, and it's so important that you have some uh, agreements on, on um, the attack. Mm. So where, where do I aim at the opponent so that you give your, your net player the best opportunities of intercepting? And you really, in, in women's doubles, you really need to to go for these points that are, they seem easy, they're not easy, but um, you can't just work on harder and harder and harder for, for your points. So very, very important to be alert in these uh, situations where you have a small advantage. Yeah. Well, it's quite a nice advantage as far as the score is concerned. Five point advantage for the Danes. I'm looking at the Japanese pair, looking at their record, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steen, but I don't think they've ever been in any Super Series quarterfinal. I know they didn't do it before the World Championships, but I don't think they've done it since the World Championships either. No, sounds, so the, the sounds right. Yeah. Looking for the first ever quarter final is looking a tall order at the moment. Yeah, and it could get hard for um, Fukuman and Yonao to be selected for the Olympics, even though they won a, a world championship bronze. Yeah. There's two other very capable Japanese pairings ahead of them. Seven, wow. Or at least competing. I'm not sure. Kakiu and. Um, yeah, they lost yesterday. They lost yesterday, so I'm not sure that they're ahead of them. But um, Well, certainly on the Super Series standings, Matsutomo and Takahashi currently four. Yeah, there's six Kakiu and Maeda. Six in the world ranking. Yeah, and they're five in the Super Series ranking. Yeah. Whereas Fukuman and you're now uh, number 13, 10 at the moment seven. on the Super Series ranking. So almost, is it the same top s top 16 to get two pairs? No, it's top eight in doubles, is top it? Top eight in doubles. Yeah, to get two pairs in. Yeah. It's only 16 pairs altogether. I think it's strange that they don't try to to play a little bit more defensive defense that the Japanese because what do you mean you uh, with the lifting lift left. lift higher and, and move the backcourt player but uh, well played e excellent variation mm. from the Danes um, mm. so they don't let them do it but um, trying to change the defense around too early uh, that, that's not working for them they're not even really getting into the rallies no the exactly exactly yeah and that's just uh, exactly what the Danes are looking to prevent Mm. Don't want to play long rallies. No, we're only 11 minutes into the match, and 
they will be absolutely delighted with the, the shorter rallies. That, that's a very good idea. Unfortunately for the Japanese, it's just long. But, but uh, I mean, why smash and smash and smash when you get in no better position? Try to play a clear and, and, and get your opponents um, out of their defensive stance, and then try to attack later on. two points away from this opening game. Yeah. Better rally from the Japanese combination. So the game point opportunities. Game point, 10. Yep. Falls long of the back line. Umpire just confirms 21-10 in just 15 minutes of play. Det er vigtigt det er, at vi har det samme som mulighed for vores offensiv, men vi er stadig bevæger os hurtigt. Their confirmation. Game number one. Number three seeds. Peterson. And Rutio, 21-10. For ligesom, uh, uh, og hvis ikke, så er det nemt, så får I god tid til at se det. Ja, det er også lidt ubehageligt, så det kan godt være, at det er lidt svært. Ja, men jeg tror, I bare skal lidt, men det prøver jeg også. Uh, men det er nemlig derfor, det er også vigtigt, at vi afgiver også for en okay position en gang imellem, i stedet for uh, uh, alt for stresset her. Nå, så er det bare et du i jeg har. 
egen offensiv. Ja, hurtig egen. Ja, hurtig egen. Og bare tålmodighed. Afgivet ikke engang. Mm, stod i det. Så sagde han. Ja. Og så stod det. Så sagde han. Så sagde han. Så sagde han. En gang måtte hun have lidt benene på vej tilbage. Så det er når vi står der, så har de svært ved at komme igennem. I think it's, of course, always that um, so we try to be clear about that. Okay. So there's no line between when, when you start thinking ahead and not only thinking about winning this match, but also playing in the right way in order to increase your chances of uh, yeah. having a long life in the tournament. Yeah, that's a good point. From from what we just can see, I, th I think the Danes seem to be in, in quite good shape. Um, that's Black definitely again. something that Kenny Jonasson has worked Double. with them uh, on. Uh, they have a, a special um, uh, physical coach practicing footwork with them. Of course, they're not really tested in this match, so we don't get to see them after these long rallies that mm. uh, that are interesting. Very interesting to see how players respond after a couple of long rallies. Are they keen on playing more long rallies, or do they go for the winners? It's wide. Wide of the Double center line. One. Yeah, and I mean, that has been a tactic that's been used by many women's doubles pairs against European pairs especially, and that's well taken from the left-hander. You know, and one. and I listened to your comments in the latter stages of that opening game, Steen, when you were saying that, you know, the Japanese players weren't really, when they were attacking, weren't really getting any advantage, no. and therefore occasionally, why not throw in the clear yeah. and, and extend the rallies, yeah. you know, and, uh, I, I can understand completely why you were saying that. It's got every logical sense about it. I can't, you know, but I watch women's doubles now and I think that aesthetically to the viewer, to the spectator, to me as a badminton fan, to watch the way the Danes play, where they try and attack, they look for one of them to go forward to the net, they are hunting the shuttle and yeah. so on. I love watching that style of play, but it isn't as successful as the style of play that you're talking about. Having said that, I think the the very top Chinese players, pairs in the world, uh, the world and Olympic champions, do play an attacking style, yeah. but they've also got the defensive uh, capabilities that yeah. I'm not sure the Danes have got such a solid defense as, as the world and Olympic champions. I, I'm sure they don't. Yeah. I'm sure they don't because they cannot stand lifting five or six times in mm. a row. Um, so, so of course, you, you sort of um, set your game up to maximize your strength and, and, and minimize your weaknesses. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, uh, th this match is like um, a little bit different because the Danes get through with their attack, or at least has gotten through mm. with their attack in the yeah. first game. So, so uh, it's nice to continue attacking. But, but uh, the trick is when when you play strong opponents or, or opponents with a great defense, and let's see if the Japanese get the defense going. Then, then you should know when to when to. Uh, when to hold them, know when to fold them. I mean, mm. you got to know when to stop attacking and, mm. and, and let the other ones uh, give it a shot in order yeah. to preserve energy. Four, three. And that's very difficult because it might change within yeah. one single rally.
good judgment. Dabei sauber. Ball. Oh. Going back to your Five, comments, four. I think during our first match, you've been talking to Christina Peterson over breakfast, and she was saying that the shuttles were, were really fast. Yeah. Now, that is going to obviously help the attacking pair. Yeah, that's going to favour the Danes. Yeah. No doubt but about but that. But it, I mean, I think that, you know, I think that personally, that we've been playing with shuttles that are probably too slow in women's doubles. Yeah. And I think tournament referees have got to understand that, you know, particular speed of shuttle is not necessarily the right speed for men's singles players as it is for women's doubles players. And, you know, that different speeds could be appropriate for different disciplines. Yeah. What's happening to Camilla Ritchie-Yorge she's sort of uh, moving her left leg in an awkward way here hopefully nothing serious yeah and I think um, we've seen a number of tournaments played with two slow shuttles in all mm. categories and, and yeah. slow Double shuttles Double. sort of um, um, makes the field bigger because uh, great shots, precise shots, strong attacks are, are more or less nullified yeah. by slow shuttles. So um, Yeah, and there's been a lot of talk in our sport about wanting it to be more dynamic, exciting, explosive style. And, of mm. course, if you have attacking players who, yeah. who are successful with shuttles that, that the winners are winners and not nullified, as you've just explained, then, you know, that that's good for the whole development of the sport. And and I see women's doubles, especially when I see this Danish pair attacking like this, I, I get that joy from watching again that sometimes with women's doubles, you know, where it becomes, it's just as intriguing that it becomes a, a survival of the fittest. Yeah. But our sport is more than the survival of the fittest. Yeah. No, it should be, in my opinion. The fitness should be a big part of it, but it shouldn't be the major part of it. I think the skills, the attacking play, the net play, the touch, yeah. the tactics should all play an important role. Yeah, because if you play so long rallies um, all the time during a match. It, it becomes a little bit like a, a soccer match where you play without goals, but where you yeah. get the uh, points for artistic impression. Mm. It will be hard for the majority of, of the spectators to enjoy it uh, mm. thoroughly. Yeah. Just a word from the umpire there to Fukuman. Yeah. Don't shout at your opponent when she's just made an error into the net. <laughs> That's a good return of serve again, isn't it? I couldn't really remember who Fukuman and you're now beat at the World Championships, but I've gotten the results here and they beat three seeded pairs, Vivian Kamun and Wonki Wei of uh, Malaysia. And the greatest results, in my opinion, they beat Lu Ying and Lu Yu of China, yeah. the number two seeds. Mm. That was the really, really surprising results, in my opinion. And then in the quarterfinals, Kutsa Chiwala and Aswini Panapa. Mm, four point advantage. And I, I remember that match against the identical twin sisters from China, Liu Yu and 
Lu Ying because they saved a match point in the second game, if I remember correctly. Yeah. 21-19 in the decider, so mm. a very, very close match. But they seem a bit at a loss. I mean, what do you think? What, what's your interpretation of this? Well, his arms in the air. Is he saying threatening, threatening at the net, even if you feel you can't yeah. intercept? Yeah. Rackets up ready. Yeah. Uh, just, you because know, sends a message. Yeah, and, and if you have your racket up, you... Um, You, you tend to to judge your possibilities um, unconsciously. You tend to judge your possibilities mm. differently. Yeah. If you have your racket up, there are more rallies that you can uh, that you can go for. There are more shots yeah. than you can go for than if you you have your racket down. Yeah. There's a lot of um, shots this. that you say, "Oh, that's not mine. That's not mine. That's not mm. mine." So you, you uh, unconsciously yeah. uh, judge differently, and it's. It's easy for the Danes to get sort of um, um, content here. We've never lost a game against these two players. We won the first game 21-10, so everything is um, working out well. And, uh, and that's the formula for disaster, because yeah. at some point you're going to lose a game, and, and that might be the idea that you don't want to give your opponents on how to beat you. Yeah. It's a lovely change of pace. So by Sauber, eight, fourteen. Well, it was five straight points. Yeah, three good points after the interval. Yeah. From a Danish point of view. Yeah, look at that return. Yeah. Uh, Just like we saw Chai Yun mm. return in the men's doubles. Very efficient. Little deception. Camilla Rutiul, she had two chances to to move out there, but she didn't take them. But I'm pretty sure that that was the plan. That uh, when Christina Pedersen changed her smash position to the outer side of uh, the player standing across on her, the idea was that Camilla should uh, move backwards. It's a standard situation for the two Danes in order to switch around the positions. Yeah. I'm making hand signals here to you, Jill, to explain. Um, <laughs> of course, our viewers, they can't <laughs> see the hand signals, so uh, okay. it won't help them too much. No, but it, it, the rotational play, yeah. where you know one player makes their way forward, the other player's got to get out of the way and move back in. Yeah. And we see it so fluently in the men's doubles discipline. Yeah. And women's doubles is following that and they are doing that and and especially as you say with this danish men uh, women's doubles pair that you know one assumes that the one believes that the best 
formation is Christina Peterson at the front of the court. Yeah. Camilla Ruta Yule at the back. And, and these rotations, uh, both in men's and, and, and women's doubles, I mean, there's certain rules for for where you aim your shots in order yeah. to to yeah. signal that you want to come forward or you want to stay on the back court. Um. Mm, getting a telling off there. Yeah. This time you now looking at her opponent while making a clench fist, and that's seen as a a sign of intimidation, and you're not allowed to deliberately intimidate an opponent. They look long. Some of the shots that Camilo Rutiul is returning there. I don't know what's happening. The, the, the Danes just left the court, and, and I don't think the umpire was aware what was happening either. Very strange. There was the receiver fault there, in my opinion. Of course, the receiver not allowed to move until the serve has been struck. that switch it from side to side yeah. Yeah, certainly Lars Ua liked it away from a fourth consecutive quarterfinal here at the China Open, the Danes. It's their first match of the tournament, isn't it? It is. They were having a buy in the first round, and that's just a first round match that you would love to have to get to be on the court, but uh, you're feeling quite confident yeah. all the time. Yeah, when you said to me earlier today that Christina Peterson had been <laughs> telling you that the shuttles were very quick, yeah. and I thought, but they had a buy-in. Yeah. Yeah. Completely forgetting, of course, that she was playing mixed doubles she with... She was playing with Joachim. Joachim Fischer. And one of my senior moments yeah. there. Actually, we played two mixed doubles because they, they already won the mixed uh, also this morning, so... Yeah. In the quarterfinals there as well. really more or less decided by um, the interval when the Danes went from 11-7 to 14-7 uh, to mm. pretty much sealed the match yeah
Mind you, after that women's singles we watched earlier, Steen Hunt. Yeah, we shouldn't I say too much. <laughs> we shouldn't. We jinxed uh, Sindhu. Yeah. Well, here are our match point Come opportunities over. for 20, the Danes. Match point, 13. Yeah, a very, very good performance by the Danes. 21-10, 21-13 in 36 minutes. Yeah, that was impressive. Well, Kukerman and you're now are going to have to sit down and work out how perhaps they can challenge the Danes when they next meet. <coughs> Confirmation of the score. And safely through to the quarter-final. So that concludes our five matches for the day. It all started with men's singles and the former world number one, Li Chong Wei, in a repeat of the French Open final, taken the full distance by Chao Tian Chen today. And then the two-time uh, finalist here, Wang Shixian. Well, she was uh, game down. In fact, in that opening game, PV Sindhu won nine of 11 points to take the opening game 21-18, and then Wang Shixian was way down in the second game and won 11 of 12 points to take it, 21-18. It was the most extraordinary match. 21-16 in an hour and 28 minutes in the end. Wang Shixian coming through that. Lin Dan won at a stroll today against Brees uh, Lovadez, the five-time former champion Lin Dan, 21-6, 21-10. And then the uh, Japanese pair, the seeds, the number five seeds, and World Championship bronze medalists, uh, they looked impressive too. And as we saw with the women's doubles, well, Peterson and Ruta Yule once again, victory over Kukerman and Yona. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, quarter-finals. Quarter-finals start a little later. 1,700 local time, that's 0900 the GMT from all of us here in Fujo. Until tomorrow, bye for now.